Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part two of this three-part After Effects tutorial series called The Order. Now back in part one I showed you how to create the parchment texture background and this wax seal that you can see here. Um, in this part I'll be showing you how to create perhaps the most important element of this composition and that's this animated scroll work text that you can see here. Now it's a very, very popular technique in After Effects projects these days, but I'll warn you in advance, it is a little bit fiddly to create and does take a little bit of work. Obviously the first thing we need to do is to create our text. Now it's in two components. We've got the large capital T of the order and the lowercase um, remainder. So let's just create our first letter, which is the capital T. Now it's a little bit small at the moment. Um, so go to your character panel and we'll take it up to 500 pixels. And I also want to color match it to the wax seal. Okay, so I'll come back and create the remainder of the text later because for now we want to concentrate on this character here. Now as you can see from the original animation there are two components. The capital T in itself is always there. It's not animated. It's just the scroll work around it that's animated. So we need to uh, separate the character from the scroll work and we do that by right clicking on the character and select create outlines. And what this does is it creates a new shape layer that uh, has basically auto traced all of the scroll work and the components and created separate shape layers for all of the elements. So if I start to hide some of these you can see what it's done. Now before I do anything else here I'm going to duplicate this uh, shape layer and we'll rename this one scroll work. Then we go back to the original text layer. I'll just hide all the other elements so we can see what we're doing. And we're just going to remove all of the scroll work components now you can see which ones are selected because it brings up the editing nodes around the outside. So I'm going to delete that one. So we've just got two um, shape components left and that's our solid capital T removed from the scroll work. Now if I hide that and bring up the scroll work duplicate layer I'm going to do the reverse, so essentially we're going to take away the capital T elements and just leave the scroll work. So go to the composition menu, save frame as and Photoshop layers. And we'll call this scrolls. And that'll save it as a layered Photoshop still that we can now open up in Photoshop itself. So when you've got it opened up in Photoshop, the first thing you want to do is delete all of the objects that we don't want. So anything that isn't the scroll work, we'll just uh, get rid of. And we need now to count the number of elements that we want to animate individually. Now, if, by my reckoning, there's about seven here. So we need to create seven layers by duplicating the scroll work layer. Now I'll keep the original base layer in place just in case we make a mistake and we need the uh, the complete original back. But uh, what I'm going to do now is just shy all the tracks that I'm not working on. Hold down Alt and use the mouse wheel to zoom in so we get a good idea of what we're working with. And I'm just going to pick up the uh, eraser tool and start to remove any of the elements that we don't want to use. Now obviously you'll need to be fairly careful in your final version. 
but I'm doing this um, a little bit faster than I would normally do. So take a little bit of care and uh, just do it right. I'm just right clicking on the canvas to bring up the uh, brush size because once we've done the uh, tweaky bit down at the bottom obviously we just want to uh, quickly erase the rest of the work. Okay so that's uh, step one. And it's just a step by step process of isolating all of the elements until you've got individual versions of each element that we can then adjust on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so it's taken about 10 minutes to complete, but once you've done that, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. We've got our original uh, scroll work layer, but if I just step through each of the new layers that we created, you can see that I've isolated all of the scroll work elements, and now we can uh, save that as a layered PSD file and bring that back into After Effects. Okay, so back in After Effects, double click in your project panel to import the scrolls PSD file we created earlier and hit open. It's important that you select composition as the import option because we want to keep all of those layer components separate. That was the whole point of taking them out into uh, Photoshop in the first place and just hit OK. And that'll import the uh, Photoshop file as a, as a composition called uh, scrolls. So let's just double click on that and see what we've got. Okay, so just as you'd expect, we've got the uh, elements we created in Photoshop um, all set out individually in the timeline. I can delete the original scroll work base layer because we don't need that anymore. Because we'll just be working with these individual scroll elements. Okay, so the reason we actually took this out to Photoshop is so we could create a new composition with individual layers in it. And the reason we needed the individual layers rather than the individual shape components that After Effects had already created with the uh, trace outlines um, is so we can apply an effect to each individual layer, which you can't do with the shape layer that was already created. And the effect we're looking for is called Right On. So grab that effect and we'll just drag it down onto our first layer here, layer number one. And I'll solo that so we can see what we're doing better. Okay, so the right on effect is actually quite a simple effect. It's typically used for um, creating brush stroke animations on a layer. It also has a secondary use of being uh, a motion masking tool, which is really kind of handy. So uh, what we're going to do is make sure the timeline's at the beginning of the composition. We'll go to the brush position attribute in your right on effect and just create a keyframe at the beginning. Grab the guide and put the brush position starting keyframe at the head of your first scroll work element. Now I'm going to increase the brush size so that it's at least as thick as the thickest element that we want to cover up. So we're probably looking at somewhere around the eight pixel mark. Like I said, this is where it gets a little bit uh, time consuming. This is the way I do it. I'm just gonna hit um, the page down button to advance frames forward on the timeline. So one, two, three, four, takes us four frames ahead. And you just grab the position indicator and put it to its next its new position on the uh, on the scroll work so just keep repeating that So I'll just uh, tap U to bring up the keyframes, and you can see there are all the keyframes that we created manually. And if I scroll through the timeline, you can see that's how it animates. Obviously we want to change it to a mask, 
And we do that by going to the Paint Style option in your Effect Control Panel and simply select Reveal Original Image. So if I go back to the beginning of our timeline, you can see that that's exactly what it's done. Okay, so the uh, the bad news is you now have to go back and repeat that process for all of your remaining layers. So um, once again, I'll finish the uh, finish the job and see you back after the transition. Okay, so that was another ten to fifteen minute job, but once you've done that, you ha you should have this, which is all of our scroll work elements individually animated. All I'm going to do now is just uh, hit the tilde key to bring up the uh, full project panel frame, select all my layers and hit U to bring up all the keyframes. And I'm just going to stagger them a little bit to spread out the animation components. Because obviously we've got this fairly large one which forms the uh, total time of our animation which is four and a half seconds but I don't want all of the animations happening at exactly the same time. I need to stagger them out just to like make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, when you're done, when you're happy with the animation and the progression, we'll go back to our parchment background. I'm going to hide the uh, scroll work component, bring back the T outlines component. I'm going to bring in the scrolls project that we just created and drop it beneath the T outlines component. And we can also delete the uh, capital T that we created earlier because we don't need that anymore. And there it is, our staged animation looking pretty cool even though I do say so myself. All we need to do now is create the uh, remaining text component so I'll just uh, bring up the text tool type in the remainder. Now if you recall we're going for a two color approach so I'm going to turn that from red to maybe a slightly greenish black and I'm going to drop the text down to about 350 pixels. I think the wax seal is looking a little bit on the large side, so I'm going to drop the scale of that down to about 35%. Now if you recall from the original animation, the lowercase text component is also animated, but it's a pretty simple job just to add a linear wipe. So uh, select the uh, lowercase text component, go to your effects and presets panel, Find your linear wipe transition and drop it onto the top. Change the wipe angle to 270 degrees. Put the timeline indicator to the point where you want the transition to start because we don't want it to start immediately. We want to join the animation that the uh, scroll work has. So probably around the uh, 18 frame mark. Create a keyframe on transition completion and increase the transition completion value until all the lowercase text is obscured. Scrub the timeline indicator to the end of the scroll work animation, so around the four and a half second mark, and drop the transition completion until all of your text is revealed. Now I'm just going to drop the uh, timeline indicator back a bit because we want to feather this text. It looks far too linear right now, so uh, we'll increase the feathering to about 40 and just double check that for visibility. Okay, so that's the uh, the render. It's looking pretty good, so I think I'll uh, call it a day for now. In the third and final part of this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create the lighting and blending effects that I used in the previous version as well as showing you how to create floating dust motes without relying on a third-party plugin like Trapcode Form.
As always, I hope you found this useful. The project file for this tutorial will be up on my website once the third part is complete and live, so keep your eye open for that one. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.